This episode is brought to you by Shopify. Forget the frustration of picking commerce platforms when you switch your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling wherever you sell. With Shopify, you'll harness the same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech, all lowercase. That's shopify.com slash tech. You're listening to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Be amazed. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. This is a presentation from Dream Realm Enterprises, where dreams are our reality. Captain, we're coming in too fast. We're going to crash and burn, and there's nothing I can do to stop it. Yarr, we're heading for choppy waters, Captain. How many times do I have to explain this, computer? The SS Botnik is not a seafaring ship, but a starship. And we're heading for more than choppy waters, we're heading for certain death! Well, that's what I meant, yar! Yar! Computer! Can you give her more sail? Uh, brother. I don't see how, Captain Jabber. I'm giving her all she's got. Ooh, damn your eyes! I won't go down without a fight! Commander! What's going on down in that engine room? We need more sail! I'm fighting with these controls, Captain, but the botanic just isn't cooperating. I know this ship like the back of me own hand, Commander Makedo. And I know she can pull us through. Yar! <laughs> then give me a moment to have a quiet word with her, Captain, and she'll do as you please. No, that's more like it! Yar! <laughs> now you listen to me, you bucket of bolts. You're going to cooperate, or I'm going to have one mean fit. Yes, Commander. She'll sail straight and narrow now, Captain. That's a girl, me beauty. No, Lieutenant Commander Shinwipe. Let's bring her in nice and easy. I don't know how easy or nice this landing's gonna be, Captain, but I just may be able to land the botanic in one piece, sir. That's what I like to hear. Yar. <laughs> Arr. 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 <laughs> Yar. Oh boy, how did I ever get mixed up with this crazy crew? And you guess what it's time for? Nope, you're wrong, unless you say Robots of the Company, episode number 410, Mutiny on the Botnik, written by Jonathan Patrick Russell. What the devil was that? Oh, it must have been the starry eye making its usual nosedive. But it's the wrong time of day, and I'm sure it came from the opposite direction. You don't think another ship crashed into Bob, do you? Oh, give me a break. I mean, what are the odds that yet another ship crashed into this insignificant planet in the middle of nowhere? I don't know, but we gotta check it out, computer. Oh, you're seriously gonna waste my time with this? Look, if it was another ship... There might be survivors, and if there are survivors, they might be injured. We have a duty to help if we can. Blah, blah, blah. I've heard it all before. Whatever. But, computer, we have our duty. Duty? Duty? May as well be duty for all I care. You may care about all that noble crap, but I don't. So leave me well out of it. Look, I'm going. You stay here and be selfish if you want, but I have a duty to do the right thing. And that's just what sets you and me apart, computer. Oh, yes. Duty, honor, all that nonsense. Go on, then. You go be a hero. I'm quite content being my usual, uncaring, selfish self. Fine. Have it your own way. I'm going. Well, I wish you would. Oh, 
<sighs> I'm gonna go take a nap. Well, the computer was wrong. It certainly isn't the starry-eyed again. What do you think it is, Skipper? It's hard to say at this point, Payload. Boffin, how does she look? Hmm, it doesn't look too bad, Captain. I'd say she'd fly again, with some minor repairs. Did you hear that? Minor repairs, which means we can get off this godforsaken planet. That's certainly news to my ears. Hot damn! What does it mean, Zintron? I think it means we're saved, Briscoe, my boy. Or, um, that is to say, um, yippee! All right, all right. Let's not get too excited just yet. We need to see if the crew survived and are friendly. You mean they might want to kill us? Mad. Now, wait a minute. Count me out. This can't be good. Maybe you should all go back to the club and let Punch and me handle this. That's very noble of you, Briscoe. What a nice gesture. But there is strength in numbers, you know. But, but, but... You are on your own. I have some toasting to do. Somehow, I don't think anyone's going anywhere. Someone's coming out of that ship. Who the heck is that? I don't know, but they sure do look familiar. I don't believe it. Shinny? Oh, there you are. But, but, but... Ow! What was that for? For leaving me behind. Leaving you where? You forgot me. I can't believe you forgot me. Forgot you? But we all thought you were dead. We thought you crashed and burned up with the Titan One. Crashed and burned? The Titan One? Yes. The ship crashed into Bob. Into who? We crashed into this planet just as you did. Only the Titan One is in pieces. We've been trying to find enough material to salvage your ship. But that's really not working out so well. But yeah, we, we, we thought you were killed in the crash. Boy, Shinwipe, am I glad to see you alive and well again. Yeah, what happened to you? What happened to me? What happened to me? I'll tell you what happened. On that last stop on Gregorius Four, you took off before I could get back on board. And now I find out you never even noticed I was missing. Look. We got busy right after that. What with the ship crashing into this planet and all? Well, not to mention Dr. Grease Monkey trying to kill everyone. Oh, fine excuse. You forgot me! Well, look at it this way. While we've been marooned on this planet for months, you've been free to live your life serving on board a ship. And hey, it looks like a pretty fine ship to me. Fine ship? Fine ship? Do you have any idea of what I've had to put up with these last few months? Or who? Well, uh, no. Who? Yar! <laughs> Us! That's who. Oh, no! Oh, yes. Did you miss me, Pacho? Oh, boy. I mean, uh, uh, hiya, Duke! <laughs> is that who I think it is? Oh, man! Hide me! Zimtron, hide me! Oh, ho! <laughs> you can't escape me that easily, pointy guy! <laughs> Please, monsieur, put me down. <laughs> put you down, as in, put you out of your misery, your dog. <laughs> no, no, please, monsieur, I'm begging you. I I'll do anything. Anything, huh? <laughs> we'll see about that. Shall I have the rest of these trash cans melted down for scrap, Captain? After what they did to us the last time we met. Reprogramming us so we didn't even know who we were. I should let you do that, Commander. But I have other plans for this lot. <laughs> yep, we're all gonna die. What a shock. <laughs> I tell you what, Commander Punch, here's the deal. You and your crew help us to make repairs to the SS Botnik. 
and we'll take you away from this planet and back to company space. Well, that sounds very reasonable, Captain Jammer. In fact, I'm rather surprised. You're being a lot more reasonable than when you first arrived. I was sure you were going to do really horrible things to us. <laughs> well, I was. But it's amazing what a few fruity drinks will do for a guy's disposition. Tell me about it. Okay, so let me get this straight. We help you repair your ship and you won't kill us. But instead, you'll take us home. Exactly the plan, Captain. <laughs> Yar! <laughs> Look, do you always have to do that? What? Uh, never mind. We have a deal, Captain Jammer. Good on you, lad. <laughs> Yar! <laughs> Can you believe it, Chango, dear? We're actually getting off this planet. Chongo, chongo, chongo! Now me can pursue me career at catering! Chongo, chongo, chongo! Oh dear. So much for the term fine cuisine. The boys seem to be getting on rather nicely, not that there's some good news for a change. It's good for all of us. I can continue to pursue my entertainment career. You can return to your academic studies, sweet Lula. And you can get back to work raising your family in a more stable setting, squeak dear. Hmm. You have a point, I suppose, Mother. Are you all right, Mother dear? Hmm? Oh, sorry, Lulu, my darling. My mind seems to be elsewhere. And what about you, Daddy? I can tell by the series of red lights flashing up and down your front panel that you're plotting something in that amazingly manipulative positronic network of yours. You read me like a book, Lula, my star. Am I to assume you plan a mutiny? One that will put the ship under our direct control? A microchip off the old block! <laughs> I knew it! Can I kill? Someone, Daddy dear? You mean destroy your enemies with extreme prejudice? Exactly, Daddy dearest, exactly. That's my girl! Oh, it's going to be such fun working on this new ship. I just can't wait to get started. I wonder if they'll let me work in pastels. I doubt they'll let you do anything that involves having any sort of fun, Trev. Trust me when I tell you, these ruffians are not as nice as they may seem. In fact, they are downright nasty. Oh, I don't know. That Captain Jammer looks quite dashing and heroic, you know. Ah, I bet he's saved a few damsels in his day. Don't count on it. That Captain Jammer is nothing but trouble. And trust me when I tell you, if I had him here right now, I... Oh, here we go again. <laughs> um, Sphinx! Oh, tell us, Sphinx, what would you do? Maybe you'd better not Sphinx, eh? Well, uh, I'd... I'd... Tell him exactly what I think of him, and I wouldn't hold back for one little minute. Yar! Would you now? Ah! Yeah! Uh, oh, uh, sorry, Mon Capitan. Uh, uh, I wasn't talking about you. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no, of, of course not. I meant uh, Captain Putsch. Why, he's gotten on my nerves for the very last time, and if he were here, I'd... I'd... Um, Sphinx! Uh, tell him what a stuck-up, toffee-nosed idiot I really think he is. Is that so? Yeah! Uh, Pudge, uh, uh, how are you, mon ami? Uh, what a pleasant surprise to see you here. Yeah, I'll bet. All right, I, I'm sorry. Just don't kill me, either of you. Oh, just never mind all that. Look, Captain Jammer and I have planned out a work detail, and I want all of you to look it over. That is, as soon as I've had a chance to adjust it to assign Sphinx here double duties for his remarks. Make that triple for his remarks, Captain. Good idea. Triple it is. Mad. Anyway, I'll have this posted momentarily on the bulletin board, and I expect everyone to have a look at it so we can get to work on the SS Botnik right away. I'm sure we're all anxious to finally get off this planet. <sighs> are, are they gone now? Yep. Yes. Yes. So, well, why don't you tell us what you really think about them, eh, Sphinx? You know what, Zimtron? I think from now on I'm just going to keep my big trap shut. That really might be the wisest course of action, Sphinx, old pal.
Hello, Squeak, darling. Oh, hello, Mother. You seem to have something on your mind. Care to talk about it, honey? No. Thanks, anyway. I'm just not sure what you can do, is all. I can listen. I'm pretty good at that. Is it to do with our impending rescue? Aren't you happy about that? I'm not sure. What do you mean, Squeak, dear? Mother, if I'm honest, I'm not sure I'm happy at all. You're not just talking about being rescued, are you? No. Is it Excelsior? Are you two having problems? We've certainly had our share of problems over the years. But really, it's all right. I mean, it's not perfect. But I was happy to see him again. And our sweet Lulabelle. I'm so proud of her. And all my botlings. Oh, Mother... I think I finally understand why you left us all those years ago. You do? Yes. I don't think I can be a very good wife and mother to them. I think I need... something more. Like what, darling? I'm really not sure. And I know Excelsi and Lulabelle are planning to take control of the ship. It's all in Excelsi's plan of universal domination, which I have always supported. But somehow... I don't want to share in that anymore. I just seem to have lost that zeal for it all. Mother, I think I'm no longer bad. I mean, maybe I'm a bad wife and mother, but I don't think I can be truly evil anymore. You have changed, huh? I don't think I can leave this planet, Mother, especially knowing that GD is out there somewhere. And I'm only just starting to understand that he's important to me somehow. I mean, if we leave, we'd be leaving him behind, on his own. And I just don't think I can do that. Put your backbones into it. I don't really have a backbone to put into it, you know, Duke. Don't sass me, big boy. Just get back to work. I'm working. I'm working. I didn't think we were meant to be a slave labor force. I really wouldn't argue with her, pal, if I were you. Oh, believe me, Pedro. I wouldn't dream of it. How are you getting on with your work group, Major? I put them through their paces, Commander. Don't worry about that. And how did you do that then? By snapping my whip and shouting, get back to work or I will destroy you! I like your style, Major Excelsior. You know, I could use a man like you. And I could use a woman like you for my plan of universal domination. Universal domination, huh? I think we have a common purpose, Major. It would seem so. And I only see one problem here. Oh? Your wife. I think she's gone soft. Sadly, I have to agree with your assessment. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> oh, yes. She must be eliminated. Then I will destroy her, if I must. Can you really do it? Or are you going soft too, I wonder? Me? Going soft? Ha! Good. <laughs> <laughs> and what of Captain Jammer? I think a mutiny can be arranged. Now you're speaking my language. Uh, oh, uh, hiya, Shinny. Look, please don't hit me again. Relax, Pudge. I'm not gonna. Oh, God. Oh. Hey, I I'm, I'm really sorry we left you behind. It's okay. I've had time to think it over, and I decided you were right. It could have been much worse. After hearing what you guys have been through the last several months, I'm happy to have been well out of it. So, I say we forgive and forget. Sounds good to me. Besides, we've always worked well together. And I think we need to do so now more than ever. Now more than ever? Why do you say that? It's all over the ship. 
Oh, that. I, I know, I know. I, I've got Briscoe scrubbing his little heart out, stem to stern. He's loving every minute of it. No, not that. I'm talking about the word. It's all over the ship, Captain. Word? What word? Mutiny. I'll be sure to get Briscoe under scrubbing that next. No, Captain, will you listen to me? There are several mutinies being planned all throughout the crew on this ship. Someone to toss out Captain Jammer, someone to get rid of Duke, and others want to get rid of you. Me? What did I ever do to them? I've given them the best years of my life. I think I've always been a good captain. I've always been firm, but fair. Will you relax? I'm not talking about members of your crew. They're still loyal to you. Well, as loyal as can be expected. Most of them are pretty self-serving. Tell me about it. Anyway, I'm with you. If you want to try to take over control of this ship from Captain Jammer, I'll support you. But I gotta know what your plan is. My plan? Look, I just want to get off this planet alive. That's the only plan I've got. Then, with all due respect, Captain, that plan stinks! Sorry, it's all I got. Then I guess it's up to me, as usual. It seems our repair efforts have been a complete success. Thanks must go to you, Captain Punch, and your crew for a job well done. We couldn't have done it without your help, Captain Jammer. You know, we kind of made a good team. You're... I have to agree with you, Captain. Too bad this is goodbye. <laughs> this is... what? This is where we part ways, Captain Punch. <laughs> I don't understand. You said if we helped you repair the Botnik, you'd transport us back to company space. Oops. <laughs> it seems I told a little fib. Sorry, Captain, but it's in the programming. Oh, no. Well, it's been a real pleasure, but we must take our leave of you. Not so fast, Captain Jammer. Your days as Captain of the Botnik are over, starting now. What? Commander Makedo? Are you seriously considering a mutiny against me? That's right, Captain, and I'm not alone. I have a new partner. Stand aside, Captain Jammer, or I will destroy you. Excelsi? Are, are you seriously running off with that... that... fembot? I'm sorry, Squeak, my former dearest, but this marriage is over. Phew, that's a relief. What? It's okay, Excelsior. I think our marriage ended some time ago. It did? Oh yeah, you're right. It did. Well, that's really why I came looking for you. To tell you that I'd already filed for divorce. You did? So, why didn't you tell me this sooner? Well, I got trapped on this pathetic planet with you and the kids. And so I had to pretend everything was A-OK, -okay, when really, I've been planning to leave you for quite some time. And when I met Duke here, well, I found everything I've always wanted in a woman. Everything I thought you were. So now he's mine, Squeak, so don't even think of trying to win him back. Look, it's really OK. You can have him. You mean, you're not going to fight me for him? Not even a duel to the death? No. That's okay. Really. I've already found someone else. You have? Yes, she has. And you should go find him, Squeak Darling. Go out there and find the love of your life. Thank you, Mother. Please, do me one favor. Anything, hon. Look after my lovely Lulu Bell, my darling Derek, and my charming Chongo. Be the mother I can't be. And the mother you never were. Well, sure, why not? I'll give it a shot. Just go and be happy, darling. Um, excuse me, Briscoe, my boy, but can you follow any of this? <laughs> You're asking me? Good point. Um, Captain? I'm as lost as Briscoe, I'm afraid. Shinwipe? Forget it. I think we're going to be stuck on this planet for a very long time, Butch. And boy, I'm really not happy about it. So don't expect me to be nice anytime soon. Oh, boy. That's right. 
You're all going to be stuck on this planet unless you do exactly as I say. <laughs> and why should we do that, Captain? Because if you don't, I'll be forced to use this deactivation gun I've been hiding beneath me pirate shirt. <laughs> pirate shirt. You actually wear a pirate shirt? You know, I never really paid attention before, but that is ridiculous. <laughs> Deactivation gun? Don't make me laugh! Ha! Oh yeah? Well, one blast from this weapon, and you'll be as useless as scrap metal. You'll be deactivated forever! Yar! <laughs> Don't challenge him, Excelsior. He's ruthless. He'll do exactly what he says. I suggest we surrender to his will and serve him aboard the SS Botnik. Ruling the universe alongside him. Well, I suppose it's better than nothing. Let's go then. All right then. I'll need a full crew for this here schooner. Now, let me see. I need all those who lack common decency and who will help me in my quest for universal domination. I've got the combat computer guy and I think I'll take his family. Commander Makedo is with me. I have myself pretty good choice, if you ask me. Uh, oh, and oh, you there. Me? What do you want with me? Why not take Sphinx? He's b -b -b bad to the bone. Popsicle, shush. I need someone to make the toast. And he'd only get in the way. Besides, I'd never like the pointy guy in the first place. Well, Popsicle, I guess this is goodbye. Well... I can't say I'll miss you guys all that much. I mean, you did almost get me killed on lots of occasions. So, yeah. I won't miss you guys at all. In fact, good riddance. Lieutenant Commander Shinwipe, will ye be joining us again? No thanks, Captain. Not this time. I think I'll take my chances with my friends. All right. Suit yourself. I guess that's it. So... Let's be off this crummy planet. Fare ye well, Captain Punch. Same to you, Captain Jammer. And may the wind always be at your back. I guess that's the last we'll see of them. That is, if we're lucky. Yes, but we're still stuck on this godforsaken planet. At least we're finally free of that Captain Jammer once and for all. No more crazies to deal with, just the way I like it. No more crazies? But what about Dr. Grease Monkey? <laughs> I laugh at that overblown, trumped-up imbecile. <laughs> Why, if he were here, I... Um, speaks. I'd tell her just where to get off. He, uh, she, uh, whatever it is, can kiss my pointy metal butt. <laughs> oh, I can, can I? Uh, Dr. Grease Monkey, sir. Er, uh, um, uh, madame. Er, uh, um, uh, sir. I mean, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, please don't kill me. Oh, don't worry. I don't plan to kill you, Mr. Sphinx. That is very kind of you. Thank you so much. No. What I have in mind for you bots is much, much worse than death. <laughs> oh boy. Here we go again. I've been listening to Robots of the Company, episode number 410, Mutiny on the Botnik, written by Jonathan Patrick Russell, which starred in order of appearance, Kay Wu as Shinwipe, Steve Anderson as the Botnik Computer, Shane Harris as Captain Brick Jammer, Cat Waterflame as Duke, Joe Thomas as Putch, Steve Anderson as the Titan One Computer, Dave Weaver as Payload, Shane Harris as Boffin, Jim Barber as Sphinx, Daryl Looney as Popsicle, Kyle Boers as Briscoe, Jeff Niles as Zimtron and Derek, Jonathan Patrick Russell as Chongo, 
Kim Russell as Lulabelle, Cookie Coletti as Ruby Red Smoke, Sally Wicket as Squeak, Teg Gray as Excelsior, David Alt as Trevor, and Sally Wicket as Dr. Grease Monkey. The Robots of the Company theme tune was composed and performed by Daryl Mooney. The incidental music was provided by Kevin McLeod, with additional material provided by Stevie K. Farnaby. The associate producer was Vince Staden. The post-production editor was Jeff Niles. The sound designer, script editor, executive producer, and director was none other than Jonathan Patrick Russell. A series, Robots of the Company, was created by Jonathan Patrick Russell, and the copyright is held by Dream Realm Enterprises. Any rebroadcast or reproduction of this program of the express written permission of Dream Realm Enterprises is strictly prohibited. You know it. We interrupt our regularly scheduled credits to bring you this update. We now come to you from DreamRealmSite.com. So join us there on the web from now on. That is all. Now back to your regularly scheduled credits. Take it away, me. Thank you for listening. We invite you to visit us on the web at dregold.net. Email us only if you're not a big fat hairy loser at darkbuilding1 at yahoo.com. We were mutineers during the making of this audiogram. Join us next time as things get even more bizarre for the robots of the company. In a bizarre episode we like to call monkey business. Until then, I'm the creditor, and you're not. Boy, I pity you. <laughs> You've got you, Mr. Tittles. It seems Captain Jamma was foolish enough to fall asleep, which gives me the perfect opportunity to steal his deactivation gun. <laughs> now the universe is mine! <laughs> That's my girl! This has been a production of Dream Realm Enterprises. Copyright 2008. All rights reserved. Hi, my name is Tracy Babian, co-author of the Carlson Chronicles podcast. My husband, J.A. Babian, the main author, had a triple stroke in the latter part of August of this year. Jerry was lifelighted to Tulsa, Oklahoma, with a brain bleed that the doctors thought they were going to have to do surgery on him, which surely would have killed him. Thank the Lord they didn't. He survived that brain bleed and swelling, but he is in need of so much for his recovery. I have started a GoFundMe to help with all the costs that I just don't have. I retired back in April of this year so that I could take care of Jerry, as he was starting to show signs then that I just didn't catch. Little did I know this would be a blessing in disguise. He is fighting this setback of memory loss, and 75% use of his right leg, arm, along with his cognitive speech. Considering the doctor said he would not make it, I consider him to be a miracle. Medicare has only granted 12 visits of physical and speech therapy twice a week. He needs at least six months worth of speech therapy alone. That is a total of $4,000 we need to pay up front that I just don't have. So far, we have had $775 in donations of the 10000 we need come in. Please donate today so that he can get his needed medication, therapy, and also help pay bills that Medicare just will not cover, even if it's only $5. I update this account so folks can see his progress. You can go to my Facebook account, Tracy Babian VO, to find the pinned link with the title Jerry Babian Stroke Victim Needs. Jerry says, thank you. I still have a lot to write on my stories that I want to get done. Please help me to achieve that goal. Thank you in advance for your donation. Tracy Babian.